Hello everyone. Hope you all are doing well. And a very happy new year to all my family members. Please stay safe and stay healthy. Today we will see a landmark case on a concept known as majority rule. Do you know what is a majority rule? If you really do, now is the time. Pause the video, write the answer in the comment box and check it afterwards. and this will help you to remember the answer always as you already know that a company is a juristic person and has a separate legal entity different from its members thus it can sue and be sued in its own name and since it is a legal person all the decisions of the company are taken by its shareholders and its board of directors through voting system hence the decision which gets the majority votes are binding on everyone it can be a simple majority or special majority depending upon the requirements of the law so once it is passed by the majority members generally court do not interfere with its decision as long as directors are working within the power of moa or aoa This concept is actually known as majority rule in which court do not interfere in the decisions taken by the majority members as long as they are not ultra virus the MOA or AOA Now with all these understandings let's look into the case Hello Mr Turton Hello Mr Foss Nice to meet you Nice to meet you too. It seems to me that minority shareholders are not very concerned about the company. Yeah, that's right. And I think that's because they are not aware of the situation and also they are basically innocent people who don't know about their rights. Yeah, you may be right on this. The property of this company are misappropriated and wasted and the mortgages were given improperly. We should do something. But what can we do? That's the decision taken by majority shareholders. But they should not forget that minority shareholders also have their rights, and they cannot do whatever they want to do with the property of the company. As a shareholder of the company, we can take legal action against the directors and all other persons who are responsible for this mess. Okay, all right, let's do it. They filed a claim against the five directors of the company: Thomas Harbottle, Joseph Adshead, Henry Byram, John Westhead, Richard Bealey, and the solicitors and architect Joseph Dennison, Thomas Bunting, and Richard Lane, and also H. Rotten, E. Lloyd, T. Pete, J. Biggs, and S. Brooks, the several assignees of Byram, Adshead, and Westhead, who had become bankrupts. Sir. The directors of the company are misappropriating the property of company and being the minority shareholders we on behalf of all the shareholders wants to sue the wrongdoers Sir our claim is based on three grounds My first ground is that the defendants had done fraudulent transactions through which the assets of the company were misappropriated My second ground is that there is insufficiency of qualified directors in the company who can actually make up in the board My third ground is that company had no clerk or office Sir, due to these circumstances the shareholders had no power by which they could take the property from the hands of the directors and therefore had to commence legal proceedings against them. Sir, the plaintiff do not have any right to bring a legal action against my clients on behalf of the company. A company is a legal person and can sue on its own name if suffered any injury. Sir, this company should not be treated as ordinary company as it was incorporated by the parliament. Moreover, The act of the incorporation was passed with the aim to benefit the company, but the directors tried to fulfill their own interest. The directors should have acted as the trustees of the company and should be held accountable for misappropriating the assets of the company. Therefore, this act permitted us to sue any persons who caused the corporation any harm, although it did not allow the employees of the company or outsiders to sue the board of directors. Issue raised in the case. whether the members of the company can file suit on behalf of the company or not an individual shareholder or any outsider of the company cannot take any legal action against the wrong done to the corporation as both the company and its shareholders are considered as separate legal entities 
It is also mentioned under Section 21 1, uh, of the Companies Act, that a company may sue and be sued in its own name. And a member may not take any legal action on behalf of the company. And if a company has a right against the party under a contract, then it is for the company to sue. The reason that the shareholders of the company cannot sue is that the company is the one who has actually suffered injury and not its members, so it is on the company to sue or take any legal action against those members who have misappropriated its property. Thus, the claim of shareholders were rejected because the proper plaintiff in this case was the company. In this judgment, two rules were established. First and the foremost rule was the proper plaintiff rule, which laid down that if any wrong done to the company or company suffers any losses due to the fraudulent or negligent acts of the directors or any other outsider, then in such situation only the company can sue the directors or outsiders in order to enforce their rights. The second rule was Majority Principle Rule, which laid down that if the alleged wrong can be confirmed or rectified by a simple majority of members in the general meeting, then in those cases the court will not interfere. Now you must be thinking that this is a very harsh decision upon the minority shareholders. And yes, it's true that it is harsh and somewhere unjust because the minority will always have to accept the decisions of the majority. Therefore, in order to mitigate this harshness, four exceptions to the general principles have been laid down where the litigation will be allowed. The first and the foremost exception is where the elite act is ultra-virus and illegal. The second exception is concerned with the situation where the elite act could only have been validly done or sanctioned in violation of a requirement in articles by some members of the special majority. The third exception is related with the elite acts that cause invasion of claimant's personal and individual rights in his capacity as a member of the company. And last but not the least, the fourth exception deals with a situation where a fraud on minority has been committed by the majority who themselves control the company. That's all for today's video. Hope you all clear with the concept and the case now. See you all soon.